Finding out a moving average is a pretty common ask in the business. And we'll obviously see that how can you find moving averages in Power BI. But more importantly, I'd also like to demonstrate that how do you validate the results and how do you build a check around moving averages so that the user is confident that he is taking a look at the right numbers. All right, no further ado, you're gonna have fun. Let's start. All right, let's explore the idea for the moving average for just a quick second, and then we will proceed on to build the calculation together. Here I have built a simple pivot table, which is where the first column is the year column, the month column. These two columns, year and the month, are coming from the calendar table. And then against that, I already have total sales calculated. It's pretty simple. I'm sure you can figure that out. Now, for the total sales, I would like to find a moving average for the past three months, hypothetically speaking, and then we will also automate that. So for the month of January, because we don't have any prior data to January, the moving average is going to be the very number that we see. For the month of February, the moving average is going to be for two months because you know that's what the data is available to us. So that's what the number is going to be. And for the month of March, you know, from here onwards, you will start to have three months of data and you are going to have three months of moving average. When you move to the April month, you're going to have a moving average like this and then like this and then like this, so on and so forth. Well, you get the idea. Now, what we're going to do is, first of all, we will create a dynamic period, which is going to go take a look at three months back dates. And then against those dates, we will try to find moving average. So let's just start creating our measure in the sales table. So right click, make a new measure. I'm going to call this as moving average and I'm going to start to use a variable and I'm going to call this as my period. Now, the function that I'd like to use is something like dates in period, which is a function that can conveniently give us the moving dates in the past three months. And it asks me, hey, what's your calendar date column? So the calendar date column is right here. That's my first one. Then it says, hey, what's your start date? So my start date is going to be the end of the month. So if my filter context is the month of April, then my start date becomes, let's say, the 30th of April, right? If my filter context is the month of May, then my date becomes the end of May. And for that, I'm going to use a function called max of the calendar date whatever context you are in at the moment, just pick up the last date in that context. Then it says, how many periods would you like to move? So I'd like to move negative three periods behind. And then what's your interval? I'd like to move by the month. That's it. Close the bracket. Now dates and period actually is going to give us a table and returning this in the measure is going to give us an error because you can't really return a table in the measure. Well, what we're going to do is at least validate our results. So I'm just going to say, hey, why don't you count the number of the rows in the table that we have created, which is nothing but the period table. And let's just see what the result is going to be. So moving average dragged right here. Now, in the month of Jan, since we are only looking at the month of Jan and there is no prior data, that's 31 days, that's 59 days, considering Feb is shorter month, and then 90 days, 89 days, 92 days, so on and so forth, seems, seems right. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start to build the formula further, and I'm gonna say something like, hey, you know what? For all of these dates that we have received, which is the rolling dates of three months, I would now want to calculate total sales. Because moving average calculation has two parts. It has the numerator as what's your total sales, and the denominator is going to be the number of months. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another variable. So I'll say var, I'm gonna calculate total sales, which is going to be something like calculate, hey, I would like to calculate my total sales and here is going to be the period filter for whatever period that I'm trying to calculate. And let's just try to return our total sales numbers right here. Where are you? Right here, press enter. Let's just see what do we get. Now, for the month of Jan, we are getting the very number. That's good. For the month of Feb, we are getting the total of these two. That is also good. For the month of March, the total of the first three, the, for the month of April, the, the total of Feb, March and April, and that also seems to be right. Now, we have received the numerator, we've also got to have the denominator, and the denominator has got to be the number of months, right? So let's just go validate that real quick. So I'm just gonna create another month right here. So I'm just gonna say var, uh, this is my months, and that is going to be let's say the unique count or the distinct count of the calendar table month column. So calendar table month column. So just make a unique count of that, given that the filter is the period filter that we have just applied. All right, let's just go validate the results quickly for this month. Press enter. What do we get? 
we have one month here. So whatever numerator that we had divided by one, whatever numerator that we had divided by two, divided by three, so on and so forth. And that is going to fetch us the right result. Now, the only thing remaining is to divide the two numbers. So I am going to say, hey, I'd like to divide my total sales, which is right here, divided by the period, which where are you right here, close the bracket and commit to this, press enter. And this gives us an error because this should not be divided by the period. I'm so sorry. It should be divided by the month and press enter. And that gives us the right moving average. Once we have calculated the moving average, the next thing that we would want is to give the user the confidence that the calculation is right and is giving you the number as it is expected. Now, once you take a look at any number, perhaps let's say this number 1130, now the user will literally have to take a total of the three numbers right here, divided by three to get to this number. That means the validation resides in the hands of the user. He will have to do some math maybe on the back of the envelope to get this. Can we help the user build another calculation that is going to act like a check as to what we have built is the right answer. And that is just going to make the model better, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to write another calculation. So a, a new measure, and the measure is going to display that what numbers are being shown up in the calculation. So I'm just going to say that this is nothing but my moving average check. And this is going to be pretty much like the measure that we have created. The only difference is that rather than adding the numbers out, we will display the numbers, what numbers are leading up to that calculation. And you will see the result. So I'm going to create an, a var here and I'm going to say that this is nothing but my period or this call this as months, let's say. And I'm going to say something like, hey, you know what? I'm trying to summarize a table in the table. I'd like to have three months of data, which is the rolling months. And to be able to get that, we need the dates in period function that we use. So dates in period, which is going to be, hey, the calendar date, obviously. So calendar date, then it says, hey, what's your start date, which is where we set the max of the calendar date. So that is the max of the calendar date. And we asked it to move behind three months. So uh, move behind three months. And then uh, that's going to be the month. Now that is nothing but a filter that is going to move the dates behind three months. But I don't really want the dates. I don't want one Jan, second Jan, third Jan, so on and so forth. I want Jan, Feb and March. That's it. That's all that I would want. So I am going to use the dates in period in my summarize function to build a filter for that. So I'm going to say something like, hey, I would like to calculate a table. And the table that I'd like to calculate is summarize of, let's say, the calendar table. And the column that I would want in the calendar table is going to be, let's say, the month, the month index, and of course, the year in the calendar. So the calendar table is going to look something like this, right? You will have a column called year in the calendar table. You will have a column called month in the calendar table. And obviously the month is sorted by the month index to display the months in the right order. So these are the three columns that you're going to get in the calendar table. No dates, just the months. Now, this particular table is going to be made for only this particular rolling period that we have created right here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to quickly test this calculation out real fast. So I'm just going to go right here and I am just going to close the bracket real quick and I'm going to return the answer and I'll say, hey, why don't you count the number of rows? Or in fact, let me just use the concatenate X function. So I will show you what the table looks like. So concatenate X, here is a table that we have created, which is the months table. So go inside every single row of this table and why don't you pick up what is there? So I'm going to say, hey, there is a year column that we have created. Please concatenate that with, let's say, a little dash or maybe a pipe. And then also show me the month column. So month, I hope we get that month and that's good to go. So close the bracket, press enter, and we'll drag this calculation out in our visual. And you're going to see that we have been able to get the year and the month. So this is 2011 Jan. That's good. And then we have 2011 uh, Jan and 2011 Feb. Let me just kind of put a comma so that this becomes absolutely clear. Where are you? Moving average check right here. And I will say, hey, why don't you just delimit yourself with a comma, which is a part in concatenate X. Now, if you're not aware of how to use concatenate X, obviously, I will suggest that you watch another video of mine. And I have done some excellent examples of concatenate X that you're going to find it very, very helpful. Nevertheless, let's continue. So concatenate X loop through this table and please concatenate the year and concatenate the month and then put a separator as a comma in between. Take a look at the result. What we have been able to get is here 
there is just one month here there is two months of data here there is three months of data here there is four so again three months of data but rolling so on and so forth we have been able to get the months now what we are going to do is against every single month we will fetch the value that is being added and displayed right here it's going to be fun so what we're going to do is something like this i'm going to say that hey go inside every single row of this table but i don't really want you to concatenate the year and the month that's useless i would want you to concatenate my total sales calculation and let me just format this a bit so format total sales and i just want to have let's say no decimal comma separated value displayed right here and that i believe is good to go and let's say the delimiter is going to be a com all right now what we get is nothing but the values displayed right here so this is 1199 and then the second value the second value so on and so forth and this is just working out beautifully now it actually tells us that these are the three values which are feeding into this particular number obviously if you have built the numerator you would obviously like to build the denominator too so i am going to go ahead and say something like rather than having comma why don't we add a plus sign and this looks much much better let's just also add some commas in here that looks good and then what we are also going to do is we're going to add a bit of bracket so that it actually looks like a calculation so i'm going to say hey why don't we start with an open bracket concatenate that with this calculation and plus plus all of that and then end this calculation with closed bracket and that is again going to be an n percent so let's just see how this calculation turns out to be press enter and that is my brackets added now i would like to divide this by another calculation which is nothing but the number of rows in the table that we have created which is nothing but the months so i'll say count rows of the months table so months and close the bracket press enter and that is divided by three and that is divided by one that is divided by two divided by three divided by three and this is a check that we have built that the numbers that are leading up to the calculation are these three numbers and divided by three it gives the user a lot of confidence to understand that how the calculation was built all right final part of the video that how are we going to transform this into a more dynamic calculation at the moment we are necessarily going three months behind what if i'd like to have four months behind moving average or six months behind moving average i want that control to be in the hands of the user so what am i going to do i am going to create a table for creating a slicer so i will go ahead in the table tools and new table and i'm going to create a table which is going to give me the ability to make a slicer so i will say selected months which is going to be let's say five or six values, whatever that may be. So generate series is the function that I use. Start with one, end with, let's say 12 months behind, close the bracket, press enter, and that's what we get. On this value column, we're gonna build a slicer. So I'm gonna come right here and let's just add a visual and the visual is going to be a slicer. In the slicer, I will add the value column from the table that we have just created. That is what we get. So now I'm just gonna maybe put this right here. And then at the moment, if I click on the slicer, nothing really happens. But what I'd like to happen is that this selection should affect the calculation, this one and this one as well. So why don't we actually go ahead and create a new measure. And I'm gonna say this is my selected month, which is going to be selected a value of the value column. That means what value is picked up. So five is picked up, so that goes right here. And in case the user picks up two values or picks up no values, then in that case, I at least want to go three months behind. That's my default value or my alternate result. Press enter and this kind of, let's just validate the result real quick. This gives me five, six. If I pick up two values or if I pick up none values, it actually gives me three. That's good. Now this five is going to feed it in, into our calculation. So I'm just going to open up the moving average calculation and this negative three is going to be my measure that we have created which is selected month press enter that's good and this moving average uh, which is where i have negative three is also going to be my selected month and that is good again now five months of data pretty good one month two months three months four months five months this looks fantastic now if you were to convert this into a chart it looks something like this go right here and convert this into a line chart and in the line chart, so year and the month are there on the horizontal axis, that's nice. Total sales and moving average are there on the y-axis, which are my lines, which is also nice. And the moving average, which is the check that we have built, is there in my tooltip. So now, 
if the user happens to hover the mouse on any particular month, not only is he going to see the sales and the moving average, but also the moving average checks that tells you that what numbers are feeding into the calculation that is building up the answer. And it looks, it looks pretty good. I mean, it works. It just, it's, it's nice. All right, that's been it on the moving averages. If you have any questions, obviously, I will recommend that you please post a comment and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, before you go, I'd like to give a big shout out about my courses on Power BI, especially DAX, Power Query, and the M language courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. If you're trying to start out your journey with Power BI and you stumble on hard problems, you're not able to get your way around that, you'd like to understand the logic, build up your fundamentals, and then start to solve even harder problems of your own data I'd highly recommend that you please take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking all around and I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. Bye now.